All right, so I don't know about you all. Before I start, I just want to say that. Um, oh, there I am. Uh, before I start, uh, there has been I felt a fair amount of darkness come and go this week, and um, darkness stresses me out. So, under the heading self care, I've you know kind of in my 45 years learned how to deal with stress. I don't know about you, but I always turn to Neil Diamond. <laughs> And I'll turn him up in my car, so, you know. Love on the rocks! <laughs> Ain't no big surprise. Pull me in. Nobody who's here has ever heard of Neil Diamond. Right? <laughs> so the old people, could you stay with me? Because we're about to go deeper. Okay, so when I'm really, really bored, I envision that the movie of the musical Les Mis, uh, with uh, like a constipated Russell Crowe as Javert it was actually made in 1978 and um, and had Neil Diamond playing Javert. So I'll go to karaoke on YouTube and I'll turn it up in my car and I'll. There, out in the darkness, a fugitive running, fallen from grace, fallen from grace. God be my witness, I never shall yield to become face to face. Anyway, you get the point. Yeah. So that is, my, that is my stress reliever. I put him into all kinds of things. Get this party started on a Saturday night. Like whatever. It's just, anyway. Uh, one of the silly things that I do in my life that now that I'm in grad school, I call personal practice. Uh, but uh, anyway, anyway, what I wrote was, uh, this piece is called I Still Don't Understand Jean Genet. Not Jean Benet, Jean Genet. <laughs> so my husband and I went to Paris a few years ago and we went to Shakespeare and Company like you do. And like you do, I bought a copy of Jean Genet's Our Lady of the Flowers. If you, we all did. Uh, if you don't know anything about it, it's about drag queens and death and murder and disease, and it was right up my alley, so of course I bought it. Also, interesting to note, he wrote it while he was in jail. It was confiscated and burned. He had to write the entire thing again, so in a sense, it's like working in SIS. <laughs> Uh, but even before I came here, it, uh, the book holds a special place in my heart and my soul because it sits on my bookshelf and its major main job in my house is to mock me. Because about once a year I pick it up, I read five pages, I have no fucking idea what the hell is going on, and I put it back in a, like a fit of frustration. And frequently when I come to Goddard, um, that is how I feel. Uh, <laughs> really, really frustrated, and um, because of the work being done by the people that I am going to school with. Uh, I frankly find it so incredible, and I'm in awe. And depending on my mood and my mood stabilizers, either I find it really inspiring or totally paralyzing. Um, not for nothing, this is my second semester, and it is only in the last two days that I realized that the capstone project, the thesis, the portfolio, the portfolio thesis, and the thesis portfolio are all the exact same thing. And I was alternately embarrassed and really happy that I didn't have to do as much work as I thought I had. And then the other day, it actually took me 40 minutes, a nervous breakdown, and an entire text thread to find the handbook. I'm going to read to you part of that text thread. Do you have any fucking idea where to find our degree requirements? For the MFAIA? Yes, for the MFAIA! Somewhere there are degree requirements and addendums and addendums to addendums and addendums to addendums to addendums to regarding the concentration. Go to Goddard.net. Goddard.edu? Yes, then go to Goddard.net. I am tempted to quit right now. I can't find it and I have no idea why it is a closely held secret. I believe that is a crucial rite of passage in G2. It's there in the handbook, I promise. What fucking handbook? <laughs> the one on Goddard Net. <laughs> it's there, I'll show it to you. Oh my fucking God, I just found it. That is some bullshit, I feel like I am being hazed. And yes, this is going in my cabaret. <laughs> but anyway, back Back to mine. So my G has a Facebook page that is private, 
Um, and of course, the people in Maji post their work. And uh, it, it, is, it blows me away, honestly. And I'm, I just feel so fortunate to be able to call this incredible group of artists my cohort, my friends. Um, in the meantime, you know, they're like out changing the world and I'm like, yeah, still taking naked selfies and writing haiku. <laughs> I would, however, like to share a couple of my more recent haiku with you. Typed poem into my phone, autocorrect changed it to the word porn. <laughs> Took three books from Pratt and read not a single one, but I did lose two. <laughs> this one is where my obsession with porn and haiku meet. <laughs> Pro tip for bottoms. Write your to-do lists on the inside of your calves. No, nobody? To the inside of Oh, I have to get milk. Nobody, really? Am I the only bottom here? Oh, wait. And then I wrote one that actually turned into a series that I didn't realize was going to be a series. Breaking, unemployed, Spicer moves to Canada for health insurance. And then the next week. Breaking, unemployed, Priebus moves to Canada for health insurance. And then like three days ago, breaking, unemployed, the Mooch moves to Canada for health insurance. And I'm hoping that the last one comes true. I wrote it thinking if you put it in the universe. Breaking, unemployed, Donald moves to Canada for health insurance. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I am learning to embrace uh, the fact that my work seems to exploit the silly. We all have a lane, and I think mine is generally somewhere in there. Our theme this week was love to be free. So to me, laughter is a component of love, and laughter is a component of freedom, and I think those in power right now would be thrilled if we all stopped laughing and if we lost our joy. But I don't think we should. To me, these are deadly serious times, and deadly serious times require laughter. It's like fuel. I realized this week, as I watched the final presentations and spoke to you all and went to workshops, that this place and being an artist is about possibility. Possibility of what can be, and possibility of, what expre of expressing what is. And interacting with you all, and learning what you do and who you are, has opened up my possibilities, so I want to thank you. That Janae book that sits on my, sh my shelf doesn't just mock me. It calls to me, it challenges me, it asks me to seek in a different way, and in a very real sense, the people here are all my Lady of the Flowers. Thank you.